Greetings, everybody. It is Pseudo with MMO Buff, the campfire. My guests and hosts, everybody is here. Go ahead, give it up, raise the roof. It is time for us to gather around the campfire and discuss all things community and guild related. First off, hi guys. How are you? Hello. Hello. I have real internet. Yay! He says that as he lags his face across the screen. Uh, 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 real it nerd. Net, 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 net. It's not as silly as what he is, what was happening while we were trying to set everything up. He was in a completely different dimension at that point in time. That was really, really weird. But anyway, mm -hmm. how is everybody doing today? I am looking into the chat and I see some names I've seen before, like Sulico and Aussie and Stalpint. However, I see some names that I haven't seen before, like Iron Shark Dark. Hi, guys, and welcome. And also, hey, Kitamari. Woo and yes, folks, you guys can have your raised chalice for your Viking king. Um, though, do understand that I've absconded him this time for this episode. Yay. Absc <clears throat> that, it's, what is it called when a Viking is actually a abducted by somebody else who's not a viking I even though i, I have viking I blood in me happens, that doesn't work it, it doesn't, work, doesn't work it's not a thing many, no it's, many it's not a thing even though i no. have even though i have i have viking blood inside me you know it doesn't work so, it reminds me of a funny joke that i'm not going to repeat here but no rated r <laughs> not cable tv uh Yes. Oh, to be fair, I actually do have Viking ancestry. Most people from America are like, I'm Irish, not me. I've got Viking blood in me. So, uh, yes, and it's as to quoting from various people, <laughs> it's impossible. Yes, folks, it is our campfire show. We are here to discuss guilds, communities, and we've got our special guest. As you see, I have next to me the screenager. Say hi, screen. Hi, screen. Troll number one, already uh, starting. Yeah. Below me, I have blank space. Say hey, blank. Hi, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> what is that show? The Brady Bunch. It's so Brady Bunch. It's You're insane. You're welcome. You're welcome. We need someone in the middle for the Brady Bunch. Clearly, yeah, we need this right here. Sort of needs no. Yes. No. Yes, this has to happen. Oh, gosh. No. And, and as we have down here, say hello to Aiko, who is our special guest. And do me a favor, I'm, go. I'm not, I'm not really special, am I? I'm it not, depends on who you ask and which definition yeah, yeah, you know, we you see, use. I'm, I'm, I'm much more with Blank on, on that whole special <laughs> Anyway. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're very, very, very welcome. Anyway, as we are typical within our shows, we are going to start off by properly introducing Aiko by putting him on the campfire and basically roasting him. So let's go ahead and start with this and ask some more information about Ico. Now, your first one is an easy one. Two truths, one lie, any order, and don't reveal what's what. We just want to hear your imagination and maybe see if we can figure out the truths about you and the lie. Right then. Um, first one, I once got caught skipping school because I was raiding some world to two. Um, the zoo? Yeah. No, some world to two. Eh, to two. You, you can't make me say that word. SWP. What? Plateau? Plateau, there Sun we go! Plateau. You see, you see I'm here for you. Already. You're welcome. I just thought he was trying oh. to talk about potatoes. <laughs> In my potato? I was a little confused myself. I'm like, what? Even I understand you most of the time, and you don't oh, have as thick an accent as Screen does. That that was terrible. But yes, anyway, I got caught skiving school to raid. Um, Tatties. Number two, I can uh, flip and stick my tongue over horizontally, and I regularly do for self-entertainment value. And number three, I've played a significant amount of Hello Kitty online. You know what's funny is I totally believe the Hello wow. Kitty. I totally believe Hello Kitty. Mm. Mm. Yep. So, yeah. All right. So, we won't go into your truancy. We won't go into uh, your Hello Kitty experience. And we won't go into your tongue gymnastics. What we will, however, is take things a little bit serious. And stop it, boys. Naughty. Um, we will take things just a little bit serious. And I would like to know from you, Aiko, considering the fact that you are from Guild Name. 
Immortals knock this. There right. Yes, and what's your position there? I am one of the council members and founders of Immortals Not This. We don't really have like a one controlling uh, leader, so I'm one of three of us that runs the guild. Anyone else catch just how like serious his eyes got there? Like he was looking like I am one of the founders. Yeah. It just looked really serious to me on my screen. Anyway. So, in all of your years of gaming, of running communities and being a part of them, we would like to know, with 2020 hindsight being what it is, what one decision have you made that, looking back on now, you definitely would have done differently? Um, it's a mistake I've made repeated times, and it's been from my earlier years, because I learned the lesson, um, guild merges and the accepting of larger groups and the, that sort of sized um, responsibility and trying to merge in two separate communities into one and make it function on the other side. Um, my hindsight would be don't attempt it, don't do it, it won't work. Uh, <laughs> one, of these, one of these days we will get into a show on how to successfully done it because I have successfully done it multiple times and I can mm -hmm. give quite a bit of advice on how to do it successfully. So... It is possible, so you can take his, uh, his statement, don't do it, until you've seen our show. There you go. <laughs> I, 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 the, the experiences I had went very south, um, very far south, very, very quickly. Mm. Um, it primarily comes to when you're trying to merge your leadership more so than your members, because your members tend to align behind the previous leaders, and then it's getting people in the right spot and adjusting to that new dynamic that can tear these newly merged guilds straight back apart again. And worse than that, they can actually destroy them both. Why am I but, not um, surprised? Yeah. That, that's my 2020 hindsight. That is something we will definitely go into. And for the rest of you watching, now that he's taken his headphones off, why am I not surprised that he hasn't gotten a drink even though I gave people time pre-show? This is how we get rid of him. No yeah. one told me this. This is so easy. <laughs> Hey, Frank, have you got a drink? No, uh, no, uh. Right. So for your third and final s'more information question, as we get to know you better, what we would like to know from you is your favorite or most exciting or most wonderful feeling of achievement that you have ever had within a guild or a community. What one event occurred that just kind of made you go, wee -oo! That's awesome. Um... You asked me to pick out one. All right, I'll go with um. Aeon. You know, it's when not we like we don't pre-plan these particular questions and no, warn no, 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 no. every guest. This is it. the second guest we've had who's kind of stumbled at the hurdle of give us because one thing because it's not like we haven't said from day one guests are going to be asked these questions. So oh, we've seen that. I, I saw the all question and, and I sort of picked an answer and then I flipped back and then I flipped back again and then okay. right then when you asked me I flipped again. These are all these are all people that are leaders in your guilds and communities. People. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, well, be decisive is a pretty... I, I, uh, I, I don't think this uh, one on, like, three-on-one -on interview setup is just fair on anyone, really. Who said it was fair? Who Ooh. said running a community or a guild was fair? It's not. It's so not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're going to turn him over to the other side now. He's done on this side. <laughs> it's not a roasting. It's a frying. I'm just like, ah. Some more, boy. Let's have some more Ico. <laughs> and, yes, and yes, Kitamari, guild leaders are people too. In fact, all of us here are in leadership roles in one way or another. So we like to pretend we're human. The reality is, you know. We're like robots. We we're <laughs> anything, to be honest, at times. <laughs> we're robots. Yes, we're all robots. And I have to, you know, stay USB plugged in or else I stop functioning altogether. I want a gif what? of the Viking doing the robot <laughs> dance. Now you've had plenty of time to think about it, Iko. Spit it Later. out. Right, I've, like, as I was saying before, you know, you challenged my decision as I made it. Um, it has to be topping our Aeon server board. Um, Aeon had leaderboards for the amount of basically PvP points in the form of Abyss points, so you could earn them 
through grinding PV, grinding PVE in the PVP zone, you got far more from actu actually PVPing. Um, and for the first three to four months of that, we were on top of that, and we were on top of that because we were just always active in PVP and always taking fortresses, and it was just a great time to be part of the guild. Hmm. And a lot of fun was had, so it's sort of the whole thing in. So is I N a heavy PVP guild, PVE guild, a combo of both? Well, our first game uh, together as I N was Aeon. Um, a few of us had played World of Warcraft and both Search for Fall, but as a guild of our own, Aeon was our first. And in Aeon, you PVP'd or you didn't do anything, as I'm sure Screen Ager can attest to. Yep, mm. pretty much. Oh. Um, but then, no, we've moved on into other games. Um, and in Rift, we did quite a bit of raiding as well. And we all tend to have quite heavily weighted raiding gra uh, backgrounds anyway from World of Warcraft. So no, we're um, we're PVE PVP slash <laughs> back free four spaces with slash. So you girl can't say what they want to do either. <laughs> what do you mean? No, no, no. <laughs> That's like the hardest way of taking that que that point. Oh. <laughs> This interview is stacked. This interview Sorry, is have stacked you not watched stacked. this show before? And me and Black oh, yeah. control. Yeah. yeah so just... screen. I'll, you take them first. I'll get them later. You just you keep going. You're doing a good job. I'm just gonna take a break. Loosen up. <laughs> and welcome to the campfire, where trolls seem to be the big thing that exists around our little campfire. Right. <laughs> so we now know a little bit about Ico. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, if you really want to learn a bit more about Blank Screen and myself, you can do so in the first episode where we give our truths and our lies. Um, I, I honestly think I may have actually scared my co-hosts when I had particularly gone over my truths and lies. And I still have people to this day actually coming up and asking me my feelings on chocolate. I make no comment. So. What about chocolate? Sorry. Mm. Lots of filler. Sorry about well, one of my truths and lies was that I'm allergic to chocolate. Did anyone fall for that? <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, now I'm being trolled in return. Yet again, am I doing a show where I don't have the full support of the people with me? I just have trolls. Let us take this moment. <laughs> And move into our next portion of our show, which is all about the survival guide. Now, in the survival guide, awesome bunny rabbit outfit. <laughs> awesome bunny rabbit outfit. You, you, you think you're Got not bombed. getting, you are not being bombed by cats. You're being bombed by bunnies. That is awesome. Anyway. In our survival guides, we actually look into topics and try to help really dissect the truths behind them a little differently than just simply common sense, because as we know human nature, there is no such thing as common sense with human nature. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not at all. Especially not with MMO gamers, if it does exist. <sighs> but in today's particular episode as you saw on our screen and I will happily pull it up for you guys again but I'm not going to because I'm not that evil um, we specifically are going to be talking about internal communication within the guild but we're not discussing it in the form of how you should do it we're actually putting it in context in particular NDAs now this is an, a particular issue that Aiko wanted to bring up and discuss with everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my little hat, which is very tiny, and put it over to the side. And I'm going to let Aiko step up to the plate and explain what it is that you'd like to discuss, why you think it's so important, and then we'll let the trolls commence. Well, the, um, <laughs> the idea I brought to you through the hope if if I could stop being friends with a big battle axe. <laughs> if you consider that a it. big battle axe. Well, I, I consider it the sort of safe for playing side. I'm going to avoid the euphemisms. The Hi, bunny. Hi, uh, bunny. <laughs> I, just, I just can't. Oh, right. Hi. Um, NDAs and guilds. <laughs> and when guilds tend to get into playing close betas of any game, really, but obviously it tends to, it, for us it applies to MMOs. Um... With an NDA, you're not meant to tell anyone of your 
in the game, you're not meant to tell anyone you're in the beta, you're not meant to tell your friends, you're not meant to tell your family. But then, of course, you get into game with a guild, and then you've got to find your guildies in game, but you can't ask them out of game because you don't know if they're in game. And they might not have taken the character name that you know them by, and it's. There, there reaches a point where I believe players kind of circumvent the NDA in a completely non offensive way, which is to go and poke their friend, going, Are you in this? And they'll, they'll sort of shift to the eye, look back, and go, Yeah, yeah, I am. And that's how it starts. And then after that, you've got to, you have so many people in your guild, in your game, and then you've got the other half of you that you don't. So how do you deal with that? Okay. I think the very first thing we want to do before we go too, too far is turn to blank. And ask blank. Define NDA. Absolutely. I wish I actually had the actual thing in front of me, but in my experience, non-disclosure agreement is something that you sign. Normally, um, you're signing uh, between a contractor or an organization, an independent contractor, a game tester, no matter what it is, where you're going to describe exactly what content you can show, disclose, discuss, mention you're working on, uh, anything. All of that stuff gets um, defined. So when it comes to games, they are very specific. Um, certain NDAs say that you can't say anything. Other ones say that you can say that you're in them. Other ones can say you're allowed to release certain content. They're all very specific. Um, some of them have uh, five years, ten years. Other ones say until uh, this happens. They're, they're all written. Um, they're not easy to understand, but they all have a purpose. So. Uh, yeah, they are a binding legal contract which can have ramifications depending on who you've done these with. Uh, if, you're, if you've signed an NDA with a company and you break their NDA, they could come and sue you. Most game companies won't do that. They'll just bar you. Uh, if it's a bad break, they might even uh, put you on the blacklist between you know, community managers or game developers uh, in the future. So there are a lot of ramifications. Some people just don't care. but to other people, they're pretty significant and important. Now, Scream. Yes? When it comes to having any kind of NDA, <clears throat> mm -hmm. if you, and I'm just going to put you dead on the spot, you, Scream, yep. have just signed an NDA to get into a beta for Fluffy Kittens, a brand new MMO that is coming out Totally inspired by watching her walk around, my dad. But Fluffy Kittens is now this NDA thing that you have signed. And they have said, you can tell no one nothing. It is full, closed NDA. You can't even mention the fact that you signed up for the damn thing. I mean, it is hardcore. Mm -hmm. And yet, you are sitting in your house, and your lovely bunny walks up and taps you on the shoulder. And she goes, what's that? Do you think telling her is breaking the NDA? I think that's, uh, I've been in that situation, um, and the developers were made well aware of the fact that I was in a household with someone else, and that they wouldn't be able to contain that NDA within myself. The other person signed the NDA. They weren't given, a, they weren't given an account, but they signed the NDA. It's common, it's common sense with, um, with these sort of things. I know I'm not, I know you didn't want a, you, a third answer, but third <laughs> answer is, Use common sense. Talk to um, talk to anyone you sign the NDA with, because that's what I did. I was in exactly the same situation, and I just emailed them and went, "I'm in a household. I'm not going to have a private space to do this. I'm going to be doing it for you know eight hours a day some days. The other, this is gonna they're going to see it. So, do you want to give them access, or do you just want them to sign the NDA? And they sent us a copy of the NDA. She signed it and. Eventually, later down the line, she got access as well, but she signed the NDA and we were good. Now, would you... <laughs> I'm just going to continue on, but clearly we don't have a professional host here. I just love the bear. That's awesome. If you could just have her have the bear dance behind you, people might pay attention because, you know, you're thick Really? I could, the bear could replace me and I could just talk from off the camera? <laughs> yes! It might be a, a happier face to look at. Oh, <laughs> poor 
screen, poor screen. Now, see, I kid, I kid, I kid. The thing for me, one of the things that I have um, seen happen inside at least communities is when you have people who get into an NDA and it's a seriously closed one, we have ended mm -hmm. up in, gosh, this is the huge guild that I was running in at the time. Um, we ended up in a division straight down the middle. Half yep. of the group was saying, you must maintain NDA. Don't even tell me that you are involved. I don't even want to know. We had the mm -hmm. other half saying, but we're all supposed to be friends and family. So why can't we share this information with each other? Yep. So is one side right? Is one side wrong? Where is the ethical ground that anyone can stand on? Who wants to take that? And I think I'm going to make Aiko do it start first. Well, uh, this is kind of coming. It, it, it's uh, you've left sort of where I I left off with. Um, you reach the point of you've got people around you who you trust and you know might already be interested in the thing that's under the NDA, um, extremely interested, or they might be in so such close proximity to you, like um, screenager where he's living with somebody else who can see it, and. It's like where where do I where do I draw that line? And if the NDA says don't tell anyone, you shouldn't tell anyone. That's sort of the be all and end all of it. But what are you going to do if they walk behind you and see what's on your screen? <laughs> <laughs> get up, get, get up and just beat them We to the are floor. not condoning violence to anybody for them accidentally just, seeing I'm, your I'm, screen. I'm, I'm <laughs> That, that no was pun clearly intended. my point. Seeing screen. That was stoning, breaking NDAs because NDAs that are was... there to protect content. Clearly, that was blank turning his screen around. That was not him smacking anyone. You just right. That, that was me wrong. spinning my screen. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Of course, we never condone violence. Obviously. So that was me spinning this big screen as fast as possible. Come on. Just get in that screen and spin in it as hard yes, as you can. Yes. I feel so sorry for you, you know, screen They're just totally abusing you by spinning you around. Can I can I toss a couple into that, sure. that bucket? Yeah. It, 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 it depends entirely upon how big your your bucket or bucket is. Is our bucket big enough for nope. all the stuff you want to toss? No. I'll refrain. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, no. No, it is. Trust me. It is. <laughs> Throw. You have a bunch of people that are good friends in this specific instance. Half get in, half don't. Then the other people need to be respectful enough to not break that barrier. End of story. I don't care what kind of community you are. If you're an adult and you have respect, shouldn't be an issue. We're doing something. We're going to go away now. We love you. Bye. Don't ask us what it is. It should be literally that simple. And if, like I said, you got respect, you got mature people, it's not a huge deal. Oh, I want to get in. It's not mature. Go away. Well, what if the argument thrown out is not a matter of I want to get in, but I'm your like best friend. You should keep me informed so that I can support you from afar. Guess what? Respect my boundary because I have to respect one too. I'm sorry. I love you, homie. Let's bump fist, but I can't. <laughs> It's literally that simple. NDAs are legal agreements. They are an agreement you've made with somebody to keep a firm line. If somebody can't respect that, they're not being a good friend, a good business partner, a good anything. So. Well, one of the things that always... But you, you... Go ahead, Aika. I was just going to say, you've got to accept at some point, though, break... I, I agree, you know, it's a legally binding document, and I also completely agree with the concept of the NDA, which is there to protect intellectual property before it's being uh, raised to be shown. It's to get things tested, you know, to see things that work, don't work, and without everybody being able to see it and go, that's terrible because it's terrible now, 12 months before launch. Um, but at the same time, breaking the NDA can sometimes actually be a form of marketing and actually gaining profit for a company because you might tell your five friends, all right, yeah, I might be in this. Right, have a, have a quick look over my shoulder. No, I, no, I won't let you log in. No, you can't play it, but have a quick look. And then those five friends go and pre-order. <laughs> So actually, the company through the Viking NDA King break. will come to you and beat you no. up. No, no. So technically, an NDA break has just earned the company profit. Now, no. that, that is not no. really that bad don't you do it, pseudo. Don't you do it. What I will say is this: ah, fine. A company will 
it is up to their marketing team, their PR team, it is up to their community teams to decide when they want to release those gates. It is not up to us as somebody, as a gamer, who signed an NDA to break that. They may not want you to tell your four friends 12 months, six months before. They want you to specifically tell them three months before. That's not up for you or I to choose. That's up for them. I, I think people have a much better read on what to show their friends than a, a company can. Okay. So, well, let me throw out yeah. a couple of things here that have been brought in through the channel. Katamari, who might I add, fist bumps! Katamari, seriously. Um, Katamari says, I think that as long as your guild or community has a good line of communication and you discuss how it will be beforehand, they should understand. Should. Now, I am going to back on to this particular thought. If your community, if your guild has a culture of blurbing whatever the heck you're doing, it's on you to understand that that is probably going to get your guild or your community banned. And that's something we'll be going into in the next part of our show when we start to go into um, our campfire stories, because we have a couple of things to discuss there, in particular with NDAs. However, another thing that is worth mentioning is if you don't have a policy in place on how to handle NDAs in your guild or community, you need one. And everyone yep. needs to be on the same page. And if that means that someone in your community or guild doesn't agree with it, it needs to be sorted out ahead of time. Even if they go, I really don't agree with this. I think we should all just be able to blab our brains out. But you know what? I respect the community, so I am going to respect the terms that are laid down. Now, I personally am a huge proponent of NDAs. If I sign an NDA, you won't know I've signed it. Period. It is nobody's business but between me Unless you can. and who I have signed it with. Generally speaking, even after that, I don't. It depends entirely upon what the company says to me afterwards. I follow the guidelines of the NDA to the letter because I have a serious amount of respect for developers. And this goes back to years of me having to sign NDAs for legal work and stuff that I used to do for a living. So I understand how it works. Some people might go, well, the company's in the United States. I live in Budapest. What difference does it make? What? Th that's the thing. When you sign an NDA, it is legally binding, but think about how international things are today. We have international companies. We have international players. We have a world market. Let us say that you, Aiko, live in Italy. In Italy, there are different laws, different rules that are applied. You get into a game, and the NDA is legally binding in California. Uh, your country's right. laws overrides that. You can't have any law enforced on you from another country. Right, that, well, that, let's... That's how international law works. But yeah, whether or not the company then decides to continue your access through that agreement is completely on them as well. They this don't is... have to respect you. You don't have to respect them. This is very true. And the thing is, I think a big part of what happens comes down to the actual culture itself. It's the culture that you foster in your guilt. If you allow NDA breakers to get away, that's a slippery slope, at least in my opinion. Now, Mizpah asked, is it your choice to decide to make that break? And this goes to you, Aiko, because it was brought out while you were explaining um, how it gains money for a company. Uh, is it your choice to decide to make that break, irrespective of the outcome? I think anything that if you're asking if it's your choice, I mean, it, 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 yes, it's your choice to break the NDA. Whether or not it's the right time to do it, that's an entirely different matter. Mm. Um, but I, I completely understand because the NDAs, they go through, I'm not saying what happens is they get into an NDA on, on the first day of this first beta where everything's horribly broken, they go and tell everyone. Apparently, um, I'm a bit quiet. Still. You just need to talk louder. Project, darling, yeah, project. Yeah. Project! Um, no, I'm not saying that what you should be doing is... He projects the and then he day, stops! Go and, <laughs> go and tell everybody that you need to... Um, that you're in this NDA and that you need to tell them what the piece is like and tell them everything about it. But as things naturally loosen up, it becomes harder and harder to keep these secrets. My, my intent was not to come on the show 
and say everyone should be breaking NDA whenever the <laughs> they feel like it, which but, is no, kind of the way no. I feel like I, I might I might have come across. My my intent was to say how do you handle it as things start loosening up when you start getting things like competitions going on and the announced winners of competitions and friend keys and the things like this. So they know. Yeah, I've told you I, you're in because I've had to break NDA to tell you, but nothing ever told me that I could do that. And so these kind of right. things, at this point we start looking at it. I see where you're uh, coming I mean, from. I'm not going to let you get picked on because I know what your intent is, <laughs> is there is an awful lot of games right now that are coming out that have an NDA under them. Um, there was one for EverQuest Next Landmark. That NDA apparently got completely blown away and lifted. Um, mm -hmm. There is one for Wildstar. There's one for beta testers of uh, games from large companies is from Blizzard on down. I mean, there are the so many out. Off, I believe. Oh, sorry, it's called Ezo now, isn't it? That's the accepted acronym. Um, scrolls, <laughs> off the top of my that, head up, there, as far as I'm aware there is an NDA up on that one currently but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guide us from our typical guide where in all honesty the end discussion and the end thing is in our four opinions whether you choose to take them for a bag of chips or really subscribe to what we have to say based on our experiences NDA is not something you screw with it is something that should be respected and your community should have something in place to handle it. Now, a lot of people may be sitting there going, why should my community have anything in place to deal with this? And this is where we come about to our campfire stories. Now, for those of you who are unaware, I am the PR counselor for my guild. My job is to get in touch with game companies that my guild is interested in and get to know them and let them get to know my guild. That's my job. Now, Screen, you have a very similar job, don't you? Um, if by that you mean dog's body, yes. <laughs> 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 but pretty much, yeah, when it comes to when it comes to our guild our community's relationship with games companies, I am generally the first person to go to, yeah. Now blank. Do you actually do that yourself, or do you have someone who does that for you? Or do you do both? I I normally end the point of contact directly, hand shaking. But we do have somebody who does those nice, pretty emails and sort of stuff. So we have it kind of twofold. Okay. And Aiko, with an IN, do you guys have something that works like this? Do you have someone who publicly I, gets in touch with the game companies? I'm in screen's position where it's just sort of as it needs to be done, or if we're doing it, it'll pretty much be me doing it. Okay. Now, here is where it all comes together. Back in the day, when I first started running guilds, oh, gee, about over 10 years ago, not to share my age or anything... You didn't do that. It didn't start out that way. Communities changed mm -hmm. over time, which has increased the amount of, we'll say, overhead and I'd say connection that a community or guild can have with a game development company. Now, I'm getting a look from Blank that says, well, you probably should have from the very, very get-go. But the reality is nobody ever told me that it was possible the game developers were these enigmas that were hidden away in their towers working magic with the ones and zeros this is why again i am running the campfire because i want people to know i think i think the difference is twitter didn't exist pretty much <laughs> that's it twitter didn't exist so you couldn't just poke them and go in um, fairness in fairness it's I, it's a number of things, partly due to the connectivity of the world now compared to how it was, partly uh, the fact that games companies and development studios have changed the way that they look at testing and marketing, mm. and, yeah. partly, and partly due to the ramp up of the amount of money that's involved um, in the industry now. Um, back when you played, say, even as early as, say, Lineage 2, for example, which isn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things, there wasn't the same sort of money kicking about that there is now. No. But everything was different back then. Communication was still was quite a bit different. I mean, the ease of being able to Text just get based. on camera and speak to someone across the continent, sorry, across the continent was just, it wasn't easy to set up. Whereas now, you know, 
here we are doing it. And yeah, as readily as we possibly can. Now, for me, when it came into dealing with um, outside companies, it came as a shock. And it was only a couple years ago that I realized that you could make these changes because I started running into people whose job it was to do that. And it was like, what do you mean? You, in your guild, in your community, it's your job to actually talk to game developers and the community managers. Now, one of the things that we've talked about on our Monday shows are things about like how beta testing should be handled. We've discussed how communities should kind of work. The thing is, when it comes to our communities today and age as a gamer, especially as Anu pointed out in last episode, you guys as communities have a lot more power than you think you do. <laughs> you really do. I mean, you, the communities that start saying at the very start of when they hear about a game, hey, developer, developer, we're, we're interested in what you're doing. How can we help? Do you want our input? Do you, you know, we've got X experience behind us and we're coming together and we want to bring our skills, our knowledge, our everything to you. How can we help you? You can literally help shape a game for better or for worse. Do keep that in mind because the last thing you want to do is destroy a game because it doesn't satisfy one person in your guild. That's kind of unfair. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to ask from you guys, instead of going into our typical campfire story scenarios, no offense to either Sulico, Stoutpint, or the other people who have sent in scenario questions because we will be getting to them. It's just this particular topic is something that I felt needed to be scenarioed, scenarioed on in more of a question to my hosts and my guest. So if you could give advice to anybody in a community who has never realized they could reach out and do something like this before, quote unquote, reach out and touch the magic men in the tower wearing the wizard robes and hats mm -hmm. with the digital reach bits. Out and touch me. <laughs> okay. If you could give advice to anyone, what advice would it be for that particular guild and community to either help them get started keep them on the right track and prevent them from basically abusing what real power communities have when it comes to dealing with game developers. So who wants to be first? Hmm. As I look down my list, do I go with screen? Go. Hmm. Nope. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do this then. Okay. So first bit of advice that you want to give to a community looking to make that first step in reaching out and speaking to development studios or games companies um, is really show face um, the best place to, um, to meet community managers or even to get that first point of contact is going to be where you're going to be able to speak to them face to face. Um, so you'll find that things like uh, PAX, PAX East, PAX Prime, Gamescom, Games Paris Games Week, etc. Yep. All these big conventions. All right, so these are consumer shows. You're a gamer. What some of you don't necessarily know is that there's usually always some sort of business element to that behind the scenes, be it a business center, be it some campus off site. Um, it's not just there for uh, computers to be in place for you to go and play and maybe buy the game. Of course, it is part of that, but there is a lot of money goes around in these conventions. There's a lot of business people, and there's a lot. That sounds of so underhanded. There's a yeah, lot of money going around like in these conventions, you know. Just a little, a little so Most of it's been on beer. Um, but uh, <laughs> yep. as this absolutely come prepared to but, go drinking. <laughs> apparently, mm. this is for 21 but, and older in the United States, 18 and above here in the United Kingdom, Europe. Your laws may vary. <laughs> <laughs> but realistically, to come back, to, I hope so. To come back to the main point, it is it's show face. Um, emails are great, phone calls are great, but the uh, Twitter is fantastic, Facebook is, and it's great for maintaining contact, but the best way, the same as, um, as trying to get a job, um, you're generally going to do a face-to-face -face interview with someone, and the reason that you do that when you're trying to get a job is because people um, will be able to judge you better face-to-face. -face. It's always better to make contact face-to-face -face if you can that first time. Um, regarding ongoing advice about how not to abuse your power and NDA um, is have a plan of action when you are going ahead. Say you have access to a beta, have a plan of action as to what you're doing and by that I don't mean what Josie's been speaking about um, in terms of how to go ahead and deal with people that break NDA. Have a plan of action as to what you actually do. 
going into an NDA, say, say beta testing, for example, or alpha testing, whatever you go into, going on into an NDA agreement for the first time is always the most difficult for a community. Once you've done it once and your community has an established way to approach that, for example, your guild council or guild leadership always take the same names, which is a, a really good tip because if your guild council take the same character names all the time, then people that are in will just hit them with a PM and know to do it. It's a really, really easy way to do it. Um, mm. Then it will always happen the same way. You won't have to go hunting around people going, can you break NDA for me? Uh, people will know what to do. So have a plan of action as to how you're going to approach an NDA agreement not just what you do if someone breaks it, but how you're going to manage the way that people enter an NDA agreement, who's in charge, because you usually find one person will deal with all the admin, um, and how people are expected to behave going forward. If people know that, then you get less trouble as you move forward with it. Excellent. So we've got show your face and have a point of contact and obviously have rules in place for NDAs. That's from you. Blank, what do we get from you? I'm going to go uh, back a little in the past here and hit up a little bit and then encourage you on the front end. When I first started playing games professionally, or not even back then, it was competitively, this was, and we're talking using dial-up modem for... Half-Life and stuff like that. When you when you first started being like, I could actually do this for real. I could actually make something of this. You went out and you talked to dot coms. You went and talked to all these people. Hey, sponsor our Teamspeak. Sponsor our whatever it was. Sponsor our server. We'll put your name on our little thing. If you guys remember uh, playing first-person shooters back in the day, you know this server is our clan, sponsored by these people. Go get your stuff from there. Mm, very famous in the Counter Strike community. I, because I not only did M uh, do MMOs, but I started in, in first-person shooters. From that, I guess my experience is different because I've been used to since I was, oh my goodness, fourteen or fifteen, going and talking to companies and being like, "Hi, I have a bunch of people. We have this many people on our server. This many people show up per month. We would like to have a sponsorship. We would like to do whatever." That's just transcended at this point into different numbers. You know, developers, hi, we have this sort of reputation. This is you know, how we look at things. Here's the stuff we've done in other games. You have specific people that do specific things. Pressing the flesh is great, but if you don't have that reputation or you're known for it, mm -hmm. you know, nowadays developers, developers, in my experience, used to go to the, 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 the cream of the crop. So I remember testing stuff way back in the day where literally one of them sent Somebody, uh, an email from our site, wanted us to come test stuff. They reached out to who they wanted to reach out to. Now, because there's so many more people that are out there that may have potential skills, mm. you have to put together your own package of what you offer them, what you bring, and let them know. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I would say is, is make sure you know what your strengths are, your weaknesses are, and then when you, you, know, you speak to them, be have that honest conversation so basically from you what we're getting is you no know, like you said your strengths and weaknesses and create a guild portfolio that sure. you can use yeah. to present to people that you can say hey you know you may have heard of us but now now you can really know about us or you may never have heard of us before but check this out that yeah. kind of a thing there are a lot of organizations who have spoken to me recently that are like, look, we have all these accolades. Why don't we get asked to these things anymore? And I'm like, because you're no longer relevant. You are. You, you, you bring something that worked back in Vanilla or Burning Crusade for, for Blizzard. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a lot of development companies aren't just looking for Q&A testers anymore. They're looking There's for more than that. There's a certain skill set to QA testing. There really, really is. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. When it comes to quality assurance testing, it certainly isn't as easy as people think it is. Not if you want to do it right and with quality. But that's beside the point. No, no, not when the developers bounce back code that still not had bug, bugs fixed in it from weeks ago. <laughs> Which is, I, I know for a fact happened and happened. As he continues yeah, that... to drink. Okay. Now, what about you, Aiko? 
Do you have any advice for the aspiring Gilder community that wants to get their hands out there to let community or, or developers know that they one exist or how they my, can maintain things? My they are point is, is more much more of a reiteration of Screen Ages, which is show face. I mean, especially when you're trying to broker initial like any sort of initial first contact. There's no better way than meeting face to face and going to the convention circuit. It's the best way to do that. I mean, the developers front of front of shop people are out there ready to talk to you and you can just walk up and start a conversation happy as Larry about the game and it's it's the best and most I'm, I can't think of the right word least awkward way of trying to start any sort of conversation or dialogue between yourself and the developers as a entity um, is to meet them and then from there then you can obviously use emails and social media these days is just amazing for it for instantaneous communication true um, that, 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 that's how you need to get out there and do that and that's if you want to be doing that that's how you need to do it <laughs> um, as Lovely. for I, I know I, I kind of said the same thing twice in the same sentence uh, which I think is brilliant because you're reiterating a very good point but at the so in short bit... what me and Blank say just like listen to us it's fine do what we say <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I, I, my opinion aligns with I... both of yours I mean Yes, you need to show face, and also actually having something to say why you should be in is there. I mean, what else can I say? Oh, Maybe you should okay. put on a big shiny hat. hat. Then it's I guess face. I get to state mine now. My number one key piece of advice for anybody who wants to do this, because I do not want to reiterate what Screen has said, because what Screen has said is very important. I do not want to iterate what Blank said, because what Blank has said is very important. And what Ico, which is right down there, has said as well, incredibly important. But there is one number one thing that needs to be reiterated through top to the bottom of your guild or your community. Anytime somebody is repping you, repping your guild or your community, their actions have a direct impact that your PR officer must deal with, whether good or bad. So make certain that people know that their actions are things that people will be held accountable for and make certain that you do have policies in place to handle that. Because honestly, all it takes is one spoiled tomato to completely destroy a barrel of really awesome sauce. So prevent your awesome sauce from being spoiled by those rotten tomatoes. Make certain everyone rep understands respect is really important. The respect you give to the community that is around you, the respect that you give to the developers, the respect that you give internally is seriously important, which means respect that NDA. Holy cow. But at the same time, also understand that if you have a whole group of you show up, which many of you might know has happened for Enigma, at a convention to actually just go, hey, yo, what's up to the developers? Every single person who is underneath your tag in real life will have an impact. So be aware of that. And don't be afraid of turning to somebody and going, hey, wind your neck in. And notice I'm totally pointing away from my hosts right now because I don't need to tell them to wind their necks in. So yes, remember, your community will actually impact your future engagements. Because what happens if you have one spoiled tomato who destroys that awesome sauce of yours, a new game comes out, and one of the community managers or one of the developers from a previous game who remembers that rotten tomato turns around to everyone and goes, you got a message from who? Oh, you do not want to touch them. Yeah. <laughs> so your past actions will impact... Imp yep and influence your future so keep that in mind to have a strong community you need to be able to stand up inside internally and tell people wind your neck in and you also need to not be afraid to go to conventions show your face have one person handle it have your nda set up and you know have your portfolio share it with the world be positive be respectful be a community of gamers not just a community under one so, game tag J josie they, they <laughs> we, we need something that translates a little better She's saying, wind your necks in. Oh, for us. sorry. It's a British thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is what um, happens. I've lived in the UK for over a decade. It's now totally rubbing off on me. Wind uh, your neck in is a better way of actually saying, cool your jets. Stop being an idiot. Stop being disrespectful. Take your head out of your rear end because you are not what the world revolves around. Your actions impact others. 
Remove your head from your fifth point of contact, and you'll be good. That's that's what it is. <laughs> right. So. Indeed. Yes, and now we're going to move into trailblazing. So you said to me earlier today, I get to pick the trailblazers. I go is what you said. And I said, yes, I go. You get to talk about the trailblazers. So who did you pick to trailblaze? Um. Well, I... <laughs> I, I picked two, but I want to focus on one mainly. And the first one, I'll just <laughs> Did quickly mention. Did you not mention. watch I... this show? <laughs> yes! And I've got one. That I just want to give like a shout out to Wildstar Central, because it's one of the biggest Wildstar fan forums out there, and it's a really well-run site. It is oh, the. It is the biggest. I don't know if you said the. I, I did. I'm... I, did. I okay. thought it's the biggest, didn't I? I thought it entirely the... needs every shout out it can get. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's not big enough. It needs to be no. bigger. Anyway. Always needs to be bigger. Always. But I'm the one I wanted to give a shout out to was Wild Star Talk. Because um, they've done some really cool site innovations of late. Um, and bringing together a different set of... At the moment, it's uh, the core network focusing on Wildstar. But a different set of sites all under the same banner. Um, so you've got Warplots and that is run by Sarah Serenity. And that is, should hopefully become very active once the game comes out and with... Uh, scheduling 40 v 40 man fights that's going to be brilliant uh you've got the nexus report which they just keep up there they keep up on news and uh do breakdowns on recent news posts and then you've got wildstar core which is a fan site forum part of it and um, so i just wanted to give a shout out to wildstar core and sylvan who's pretty much solo doing the dev behind all of that but i believe he's got a lot more content creators on helping him put out some really cool video content as well I'd just go check them out. Have we got a link in the chat? Well, there. I'm certain you'll be supplying it because it is kind of what we asked there you is. to do. Yay! Yep. Woo! Ah. And see you, Spoonagy. Right. And as we come back and we thank Aiko for his awesome trailblazers, a.k.a. the Wildstar Core, now I come into Kumbaya. And Kumbaya is where we give shout outs to a variety of different communities, et cetera, who just have a particular event that they want the world to know about. Now, this first one I'm going to mention, I am probably going to be mentioning every single show until it happens. And I'll probably even mention it afterwards. And that's Healing Over Time. For those of you who have not had a chance to actually look into Healing Over Time, go to healingovertime.org. I will actually have the link put for you into the chat room. But the healingovertime.org is a child's play event, 24-hour game-a-thon that is going to be occurring. Sign up for the newsletter on their website. Be aware of what's coming. I know for a fact that MMO Buff is going to be involved in it. I know that Enigma My Guild is going to be involved in it. I know that Afterlife, which is Scrinager's Guild, is going to be involved in it. I know that Blank is getting involved in it. Are you involved in it, Aiko, or have you not got involved in it yet? Um, nothing yet. Okay. If only for my uh, other work commitments that I have. Fair enough. But yes, it is a huge event to raise money for Child's Play. It is a 24-hour game-a-thon. And we have, from what I've heard, people playing like everything from like Daisy to Minecraft to World of Warcraft to QNEX to all kinds of stuff. And it's, well, EQNEX landmark. I need to preface that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good catch. Um, but yes, it is very, 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 very important. Get involved. Spread the word. And if your community is not involved, maybe you might want to be. Do you know? No, there is no maybe. You want to be. Go find out about it. Go sign up for it. Don't listen to this maybe stuff. Go do it. If I'm going to do it for 24 hours, you can do it for 24 hours. Now you can finish with the rest of your stuff. <laughs> now that I am going to have to stand a little taller, because that soapbox was pretty darn big and blank is tall to begin with. So as I raise myself up just a little bit more so I can be somewhat equal to that. Uh, another thing that is worth pointing out, for those of you who have actually had access to EQ Next Landmark, there is a guild called the Lethality Group. Now, Daphonic from the Lethality Group wanted to let people know that they are going to be giving away Viridium Grappling Hooks. Giving away, literally giving away Viridium Black Grappling Hooks on Liberation Ravine Tier 3 northwest of the Crystal. But tonight at 4 p.m. PST, 
they're going to be giving away legendary gold axes. So if you haven't gotten your hands on things like that, now's the time to get involved. They are privileged with the amount of work and effort that they've done, that they are currently up to tier four crafting stations for everything. So I know they're also working on tier five right now, and they are doing a bit of streaming. And I will put the links up for their site, as well as for Daphonic's stream. For some strange reason, Twitch thinks that he's Twitch uh, streaming questionable material, but he's not. So don't panic or freak out about that but yes i want to give a mad props to them for building stuff within a community and then sharing it with the rest of the population that is quite literally nice. building stuff well, yes quite literally building stuff because this is all about eq next landmark so uh yeah those are pretty much those things so i do you have anything that you want to share with the rest of the world before we say oh i don't know go away i don't know will will, will i be Hunted with spears for my words? I don't know what's going on here. Only if you're wishy-washy. <laughs> wishy-washy. Yeah. Does that translate? <laughs> to be honest, right, I don't, genuinely don't think I've got much more to say um, other than to support, obviously, what uh, Charles play and healing over time. Uh, the idea is just to do it. Um, when I worked for Game City a few years ago up in Nottingham, uh, they had some links to Charles play, and it's just a, a really good charity to get behind, to be honest. Especially when you can help by just playing video games, of all things. Mm. Yes, it is a 24-hour gaming event, just so that you are aware of Videx. And what the gaming event basically is, is people staying up for 24 hours, playing video games nonstop. Hopefully with whatever guild or community they are currently involved with, because that's a big part of the way that they're doing this. For example, I know that Enigma My Guild, we have five different streams currently planned. And every two hours, the game changes as to what game we're playing. So that way people don't get overly bored, get their eyes stray, and et cetera. There is a chance for people to watch something that appeals them, be it a MOBA, or be it a MMO, or be it a builder, or be it a sandbox, or be it a XYZ um, kitty. I don't know. Maybe we can convince Psycho to play Hello Kitty online. That would be awesome. You, you never did ask which one of those was a lie. We're never going to ask. That's the secret of that part of the show. We never, ever, ever ask. It is up for the communities to try to debate out the truths. Now, the only other thing that is really worth saying is, uh, yeah, you've had your last bit of words. Blank, do you have anything you want to say before we say goodbye to everybody? Charity events are awesome. Even if you can't get your entire organization or guild or you don't have one, to be a part of, you can still be a part of it. You can donate. You can support. You can just Spread show up word. and support. Spread like, the word. That is going to be the key thing. That's what I gotta say. Mm. And for you, screen. Any final thoughts before we disappear out for the night? Oh, I'm 100% going to iterate what's been said about healing over time. It's an awesome event. I'm not going to say any more about it because I don't want to drop anything that I shouldn't about it but it's did you get picked <laughs> off for what you revealed last week no no but i'm not gonna i'm not even gonna approach that this but you time. didn't even sign um, an nda so you should be okay no. right right hopefully yeah because uh sam can't beat me up in real life um <laughs> but as it stands playing video games for 24 hours it, it's actually more difficult than it looks and if you think it's easy give it a try um i've done 24 hours and Hey, I had 24 hours in the Edge of the Mist when we were testing it straight out, and Oof. man, after about ooh, after about 18 hours straight, you start to kind of go a bit crazy. Only a I bit think crazy. It helps if you're already a little bit crazy, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to reiterate for everyone, first off, I want to say thank you to Aiko for joining because it is always nice to have people on who have experience, who have topics they wish to bring to the community for us to deal with. Mm -hmm. If you are it interested in being a guest on the campfire, you actually have the opportunity and the chance. It's not that difficult. Go to MMOBuff.tv in the upper right, click contact us. Let me know. I would love to have more people step into place and share their thoughts share their issues we're here to help we're here to share our bad experiences and our good experiences so that people don't make the mistakes we did <laughs> um as the case may be but i also want to say uh thank you so much to both screen who is now no longer in a closet which is lovely he has come out of the closet yes 
Congratulations, buddy. Hey, so, I'm happy for you. You, you're uh, still next a week awkward, I shall be a beer. But I've always been a bit awkward. <laughs> Just you're the silent. No, yeah. no. Apparently, you're not allowed to have the bear. You can't be the bear. It's not the way it works. And of course, I want yes. to thank blank the Viking Nation King as he is for taking time out of his incredibly busy schedule to be with us. Um, can I can I can I reveal a little awesomeness that you were telling us about pre-show, or do I need to keep my mouth shut about that? Me? Yes, you. You can reveal anything you want. Let's go for it. It's no, fun. no, no. It's about you yeah. and what you're going to be doing, and some awesome stuff for you. Uh, you sweetie, you reveal anything you want, because it don't, it don't matter to me. That that there ain't no NDA here. Not and not in the thing that we were talking about with the other show that you're going to, you know, stop by and say hi on. You can say whatever you like. It's your show, honey. You do what you want to do. Hey, I just need to make certain that you're not uh, like, like I'm not breaking something horrible See, here. This is it's the, the NDA, NDA kind thing. Of that I'm about here. <laughs> this is exactly the situation I'm trying to talk about. Well, I don't know if he you, wants you, to reveal it what? to the rest of the what? world yet. That's the thing. You what? Listen, what? Uh, I'll. I don't know I'll, I'll show you. It. You see this? If it's not in this pile, then we're good to go. So. Okay. Right. For you guys who are watching, I Where am going to state. Bodies. I am going to say I want to wish Blank a lot of good luck in the fact that he is going to be on a show on Game Breaker soon. So pay attention. We'll keep you informed. Um, Thank you, I, honey. I myself just want to give myself a personal shout out because I, I, I got a pebble. Yay, pebble. Yay. I I got some chapstick. You have chapstick? I just I thought we were just pointing out random stuff we had at our desk. I got some I glasses too. I've got a Wildstar USB bracelet, but it's not here. I'm loving the sunglasses, and I, I still have my rubber ducky. Yay, rubber ducky. Oh, you know what? Aww. I'll just drink from the second chalice, so no big deal. You know, well, you know what I totally expect Blake to do it. now? I totally expect Blank to, like, start walking slow-mo away from an F-14 on top of some kind of battle cruiser. And then I expect Tom Cruise to walk up and have to stand on a crate because of how short he is. And then they look at each other. And then they nod. See? There's the nod. <laughs> now you've got me She's lost that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. You're welcome. That's an exclusive and it needs to be deleted. <laughs> that is now going to be in so one of our quick bites. Yeah. <laughs> Never yeah. happened. Yep. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, are you guys going to be able to stick around for a little bit of after show party? Or are we at one of those days where we all kind of just got to go poof? I'm here. I'm good. You're good? Good. We're good. fine. Are you good, Aiko? Um, yeah, I can pick up for a little bit. Okay. In that case, what I'm going to do is for you people watching on YouTube, I'm sorry you're going to miss out on this next part because it is for the live people only. However, if you want to catch us, a PM, East, well, the GMT, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, we have shows. You can catch us. But we'll be right back.